hello everybody and welcome to today's virtual church. What a way to start virtual church today with Thine be the glory, a request there from James. We have 12 hymns today, four organ pieces, and we are, of course, you've probably recognised it by now, uh, over in France uh, on the marvellous organ in Nancy Cathedral, most of which is a Kavai Col. It's actually a, a bit of a, um, a mongrel of an organ that's got a lot of other organ builders in there, but it's a very recognisable French sound. Some very exciting organ pieces today. Uh, we have uh, two pieces by Bach, wonderful organ chorale, um, back it's Auf, a beautiful quiet piece by Vienne, an arrangement of air and the G-string by uh, Bach, and then a wonderful uh, fugue by Drufle, which ends very, very loud, just to show off this organ. The next piece, the next hymn, is uh, a request from Ben Wallace, uh, Blessing and Honour and Glory. And Ben has been good enough to actually send in a recorded introduction to his uh, request, so I will hand over to Ben, after which I will then play his hymn request. Ben, take it away. Hello, everyone. Ben Wallace here. I've enjoyed so much these past 18 months of virtual church, as well as uh, Richard's many uh, organ help con concerts. It's been a real blessing and uh, also been a uh, wonderful opportunity for my rising star organist, uh, grandson, Andy Brown, uh, to uh, join in too. And I have to say before anything else that he is now in university at Baylor University in Texas, studying organ with uh, one of the finest organists in uh, the, the around, uh, Dr. Isabel Demare. Anyway, my hymn request today is known as the Song of the Lamb by Horatius Bonar. It's, it, Bonar also adds as a subtitle, it's addressed to all the saints and angels. I'm going to read the first verse of this hymn and uh, see if it doesn't bring to your mind uh, a very familiar piece of music as I read it. Blessing and honor and glory and power, wisdom and riches and strength evermore. Give ye to him who our battle hath won, whose are the kingdom, the crown, and the throne. Well, I hope you were thinking the same thing I was, that this brings to mind the great penultimate uh, movement of Handel's Messiah, uh, worthy is the lamb that was slain and uh, and I'm, I'm sure you I'm sure you're all familiar with this uh, Bonar uh, who was uh, lived in the 19th century Scotsman uh, had the same text in mind that Handel used in the Messiah and that was from uh, the book of Revelation chapter 5 verse 13 and uh, it's a great uh, song, and it is properly referred to as the Song of the Lamb. The tune that I've requested is known as O Quantum or O, o Quanta Qualia, which is a which is an old French plain chant, chant melody. The melody uh, was harmonized uh, in just about the time that uh, Bonar uh, wrote the hymn in 1866 by John Dykes. And uh, this is the format that uh, we see in many uh, hymnals nowadays. O Quanta Qualia is a great tune, very triumphant tune that very nicely matches the hymn text. 
So now, blessing and honor and glory and power. Thank you very much, Ben, for requesting uh, that one. I'm not sure we've had that one before here on Virtual Church, um, but it's really wonderful to uh, hear and play new hymns. Please do everyone introduce yourselves. Please do say hello in the chat. And please do uh, let me, let everyone else know whereabouts you are in the world. Um, right, so the next hymn has come from Charles. Uh, Charles has requested one of my favorite hymns, actually. It's Jerusalem the Golden. Um, the hymn with the very high F, particularly high if it's been sung on a Sunday morning, not so high if it's been sung on a Sunday afternoon. Don't worry, I'll make sure that the organ is loud enough so if you have any issues getting up there, nobody will be able to hear you. Uh, after this piece, I think we ought to have uh, our first organ uh, piece, uh, the Bach, Wackert auf Ruft uns die Stimme. Um, the wonderful ad, uh, chorale for Advent. So, but before we get to there, let's have Jerusalem the Golden.
Well, thank you very much, Charles, for requesting uh, one of my favourite hymns. I hope you all got up to that I, uh, high F. Um, I gave you plenty of accompaniment there to help you up there. Um, right, so our first organ piece today, Bach, Vacket uh, auf Ruft uns die Stimme, BWV 645. It's one of the most recognisable uh, organ chorales. Uh, in fact, so it's probably one of the most recognisable organ pieces. You know what it is from the very first bar. Um, wonderful chorale for the season of Advent. The, the, these organ pieces, by the way, are all uh, my request, so I hope you don't mind I'm giving you a bit of variety. Um, so what we'll have the, um, the uh, positive um, mutations, because the, the cornet down on the positive doesn't actually go down to a B-flat, so we'll have to make up a cornet, and we'll use the, the Larigo, the TS, uh, the, uh, what else have we got, um, the Borden, and the Prey Stant, and the Doublet as well. We'll use those uh, five stops down there. But we'll have the first trumpet on the Grand Org, I'm looking over here because this is where my stops are. The first trumpet on the Grand Org, and then on the pedal we'll just have the, oh, excuse me, uh, the Subas and the uh, 16 foot and the flute 8 foot. So, Fuck it out, Ruft uns die Stimme by the great man JSB.
Such a wonderful chorale, isn't it? So, so beautiful and just really um, has an advent feel about it. It's so recognisably advent, is what I mean to say. Well, let's just um, quickly talk about last week. Um, Westminster Abbey was where Caroline and I were last week um, while Siren Sester was being broadcast. Took my uh, consort SW1 choir and it was a really, really um, memorable experience indeed. I should say that the staff there, the vergers and the organists were all very welcoming. So I'm very grateful uh, for that. It makes a huge difference, a huge difference. Um, and we sang Evensong on Saturday, uh, Eucharist on Sunday morning, followed by Evensong again on Sunday. So three services in total um, containing music uh, such as Harris, Fair is the Heaven, Stamford in A, uh, Howells Gloucester service, Parsons Ave Maria, Bird Four Part Mass, um, and the anthem on uh, Saturday evening song was Abendlied by Reinberger. Beautiful piece that, of course, and there were the Psalms and the responses by Philip Radcliffe. Um, it was particularly thrilling actually on Sunday afternoon, really, really memorable, and uh, uh, it was an experience that I don't think I'll forget in a long time. Even song uh, on Sunday was uh, Fair is the Heaven and Stanford in A. So big music, very exciting, um, staple music in the choral repertoire. And already excited enough about um, conducting those two pieces in that wonderful building. Um, we were all the choir lining up in the cloister. So the cloisters um, are just attached to the abbey, but a separate sort of space. Um, and the choir changing room was at the other end of the closer to the abbey. And I was hovering down there and I was aware of the organ being played just before the uh, service on Sunday evening. Um, but it wasn't, I didn't actually notice what the organ piece was. I noticed it was getting loud, then quiet, loud, then quiet. But I was too busy to focus on it. But when we um, had our pre-service um, vestry prayer, if you like, close to prayer, um, the whole choir went really quiet and it was just you know, the, cl the closest were really quiet. All you could hear was the organ and the, um, the um, I think it was the presenter who led the prayer. And at which point I suddenly became aware of what the organ piece was. And it was the first movement of Vidor's fifth organ symphony, no less. Very, very wonderful piece indeed. I thought, oh wow, he's playing that. But then we said our men to the prayer, um, which is then when the choir process in with the clergy, and he was still going. I thought, wow, this is exciting, this is very thrilling. Got into the abbey and started to walk down the nave and he was just got into the very final section um, where that pedal uh, entry, uh, that you have that low E, um, which with all the pedal reads, the 32 foot and everything else, do you know, do you know what I mean on the penultimate page? Uh, it was just around that sort of section. We were walking down the abbey towards the, um, the choir screen and he was still going, getting, um, it was very loud and very fast and very, very exciting. Um, and I thought, how on earth is he going to um, finish? Are we going to finish in time before we're in our places? But I would say walking into the choir uh, area, knowing that we're going to uh, sing this wonderful music in Westminster Abbey, hearing that organ piece being played, um, was a combination of wonderful things that just accumulated into something almost too overwhelmingly beautiful. <laughs> um, I, I couldn't quite believe what I was experiencing really, just a real a paradise of music, uh, architecture and um, what was about to happen. But anyway, he, he did finish it. He finished about five seconds, ten seconds before um, uh, he was supposed to. Uh, so he actually then had a big F major chord and then quickly reduced the registration and then improvised just for a very short moment of time um, just on the, on the main on the main theme. Terrific stuff. If you ever get a chance to go to Westminster Abbey when, when it's quiet, I would really recommend it. It's really beautiful. I say that because um, there are fewer tourists um, there over the summer due to what's going on around the world. Okay, let's go on to our next hymn. It is Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all. This is called Stella, this tune, and it's for Kevin. Now, I have a, a little apology to make to Kevin. Uh, last week in Sirencester, um, it was a very long evening and we finished, I finished recording at Gone uh, well past 11 o'clock at night and I was quite tired. Um, and I actually, Kevin requested this hymn for last week, but I, 
I misread the title as Jesus, you lover of my soul, rather than Jesus, you my Lord, my God, my all. So I apologize, Kevin, to play the wrong hymn last week, but here we are, we'll have it today. So, uh, as I say, Jesus, you my Lord, my God, my all, and the tune is called Stella. Thank you very much, Kevin, indeed. It's a really, really beautiful hymn, uh, that really beautiful. Um, I apologize that you had to wake a week, a week longer than you were hoping for, but you actually had two hymns dedicated to you. Uh, so you had one last week and this week as well, so you actually, you've done all right. <laughs> okay, the next hymn is for Andrew. Um, and Andrew, I should just say, Andrew, if um, you're watching, which I hope you are, um, Thank you so much for your help with regards to accounting um, and all things financial. It really, really does uh, make a huge difference to us. Uh, I think we'd be lost without um, uh, the advice from a professional. So um, sincerely, thank you very much indeed. And Andrew has requested, uh, My Song is Love Unknown, the wonderful tune by John Ireland. 
um, for Passion Tide. It's called Love Unknown. We will omit the starred verses. So we'll have uh, verses one, two, three, uh, five, and seven. So that's five verses as opposed to seven verses. My song is Love Unknown uh, for Andrew. Um, after which, I'll just give you a quick update on the uh, on the new organ. There is a bit, a little bit of an update coming your way after this. <laughs> Having got my handy assistant to hand to um, change the angles during the hymns, so I'm having to do them all myself. So apologies for the lack of variety in uh, angle tonight. Uh, the next hymn it has been requested by um, one of our younger listeners. I'm very, very uh, happy to have uh, younger organists and to encourage them. So Finn has requested Onward Christian Soldiers uh, he actually requested this last week uh, for Siren Chester, but alas, I wasn't able to get it in on time. So Finn will, um, will just very quickly introduce this hymn, and then I will play it for you. So Finn, over to you. 
Hello Richard, I would love if you'd be able to play all my Christian soldiers for me on the heart and heart and organ for this Sunday's virtual church. I love playing it and I'd love to be able to hear you play it as well. Thanks. Thank you very much, Finn, for requesting that. Um, perfect sort of tempo and um, has the right sort of um, feeling uh, for a march, doesn't it? You can just imagine um, onward soldiers marching. It has that sort of left, right, left, right sort of feel about it. So Finn wanted that on the Harrison and Harrison last week, but he's got it on this French Kvayakol. So a good substitute, I think. The next hymn is a request. Actually, no, let's not have a hymn. Let's have an organ piece. Let's have an organ piece. A piece by Louis Vienne. Let's have Berthers, shall we? A beautiful, quiet piece. You've heard me play this before, but I make no excuse or no apology for that because it is so beautiful. I don't know whether you've heard me play it on this organ before. Uh, it comes from these uh, 24 pieces. Um, and it's actually really, you, you can play this on manuals only. It's very straightforward, so if you're looking for music of um, um, an approachable nature, I'd recommend this. In fact, I think I played it to my um, uh, organ album a few weeks ago of easy organ music. So, Bursars by Louis Vienne. He asks for, on the Grand Org, a flute eight. Let's have the flute harmonique, as it is so beautiful. Uh, on the swell, he asks for a gamba, a voix celeste, which we have both. And then uh, on the pedal, he asks for 
16 and 8. It's very straightforward. Uh, that looks like that's it. Let's just pull out the Borden on the, on the choir for good measure, just in case. So here we go, Berserz by Louis Vuitton. Really beautiful piece that I think that's one of Vienne's uh, most beautiful, uh, quieter, shorter uh, pieces of organ music. Very, very appropriate to be played uh, perhaps before a service, before an even song. Okay, the next hymn for Ruthie um, is Amazing Grace. Needs no instruction, this does it. Um, 
we'll have that actually the arrangement here is from the um, the ELW Evangelical Lutheran Worship. And I'll, I'll basically just uh, try and get as many solo stops out as possible uh, for a bit of fun. So let's let's see if you can work out. Let's see if you guys can work out what I'm using. Good luck. I once heard a performance of that in St Paul's Cathedral in London, um, sung by a very um, um, uh, a soprano with a very rich, mellow voice. I think it was actually an alto, or certainly a mezzo soprano. Um, 
and it was very sung very very slowly in that in that wonderful acoustic very similar acoustic to Nancy actually probably even a little bit more reverberant and more resonant and she sang it very slow and unaccompanied and it was uh, really very effective uh, indeed I think when singing it as a choir it, it just needs to have a bit more movement but as a solo voice if, if you can um, you've got the breath control in it. it's really really special um, that hymn so thank you very much Ruthie for requesting that Dennis has requested the next hymn it's at the name of Jesus to the tune Camberwell now it's not the tune that I'm used to uh, tune uh, Evelyn's it's actually a different tune interestingly in this hymn book ancient and modern hymns for songs hymns and songs for refreshing worship uh, this is actually the first tune the second tune is the one I know I suspect most people in this country here in the UK will um, will know the second tune but no, we'll have the first tune today, Camberwell, um, and we'll, we'll actually, we will omit some of these verses because there are thousands of verses here. So we'll have verses one, three, five, and seven. So that's four verses of this uh, hymn. I hope that's okay for you, Dennis. I did say a while ago that actually I would talk about uh, the, 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 uh, the new organ, that there was an update. I just realized that I've forgotten to do that. So after this hymn, um, if I don't forget, we will, I'll give you an update uh, around the new organ. So hold fire. Add to the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Great fun actually to play, particularly with all of those accidentals uh, in the in the link. Very very um, very cheesy that, isn't it? Music by John Michael um, Brierley. So well, he's obviously ha having a bit of fun there. Okay, I think the next hymn is going to be actually be quite a serious hymn. It's from the Veritas uh, hymnal and has been requested by Jerry Martin, one of the um, great supporters and great uh, friends here on BT and Sound. So 
uh, Jerry has requested this and he's also been very kind uh, as to send a pre-recorded introduction. So Jerry, I'm not going to introduce it for you. I will allow you to do that. You'll do a far better job than I. So over to you. The Hymn Tune Garden is an old Irish melody from County Donegal and was collected and published in a collection by Sir Charles Villiers Stanford. Stanford later incorporated this into one of his short preludes and postludes. And I grew up knowing this hymn as Christ be near at either hand or St. Patrick's breastplate. We find it printed in the Veritas hymnal at number 15, Come and take the flesh of Christ, which he gave to be our bread. Drink the chalice of his blood, which upon the cross he shed, a communion hymn. Thank you very much, Jerry, for requesting that. Um, this hymn, the hymn book is actually full of wonderful hymns. I would love it, Jerry, if you keep on requesting hymns from here on a weekly basis, then we can actually get through. Perhaps one of our uh, upcoming organ marathons should be a complete performance of this. It wouldn't take too long because there are only 148 hymns in here by the looks of it. Um, it's a really wonderful hymn, hymn book, this, and. I'm very grateful um, to you, Jerry, for uh, bringing my attention to it. So thank you very much. It's also uh, wonderfully produced, um, really wonderfully produced. It's um, beautiful engraving on the front here. Feels nice. It's a nice um, material. I think it's just cardboard, <laughs> but it's it has. I don't know whether you can see it on the camera, but it's or it's, it has this creased effect. So nice paper as well. So actually a, a really quality product that, unlike some other hymn books that I've experienced and I will name no names there. It's good to have a very quick organ piece. This is actually an organ arrangement um, and it's a well-known piece. It's very well-known indeed. Um, it's Air on the G-String by JSB. I won't play the repeats. I'll just play it straight through with no repeats. But this is just, I don't know, I just felt like I was in the mood for this today. It's not normally a piece that I would choose to um, so we turn to uh, as an organ piece, but I think this organ with the acoustic and with the space required to um, to play, I think this organ requires a bit of space, a bit of acoustic. And the organ voluntary today is a very serious organ piece indeed, a wonderful, wonderful uh, fugue uh, by Maurice Drufle. He wrote two fugues that I'm aware of, and it's not the fugue on the theme um, uh, of Alain. It's the other few. You should know what I mean. Uh, so here we go. This is uh, and the air. Uh, uh, air. It's called air, but it's become known as air on the G string, and it's from his. I think it's from his third suite in. Um, um, 
what they call it. They call it orchestral suites, I think. So I think, yes, there it is. Orchestral suite number three. It's been arranged here for organ by Gordon Phillips. Despite it not being an organ piece, I think it works particularly well on the organ. Does anyone know where that is, by the way? Does anyone know where that is? Can you see that? People here in England should know where it is. It's, well, I won't give you any clues. But let it, write it in the chat if you know where that is. I think Hugo knows exactly where it is. He's shouting, he's shouting out the answer. See if you can decipher what he is saying. The next hymn that we're going to have is uh, for William. I think William, I don't know where you are, William, um, but I think you've had some good weather recently. And I think you've, you've, you, you, I remember you writing that you want this because of the nice weather that we've had. So it's all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. The tune uh, this time is uh, Royal Oak, um, and it's an English. Uh, traditional melody uh, arranged here by Martin Shaw. Um, very well known hymn this, so we'll try and make light of it. By, the, by that I mean a light registration. So let's have a, um, what we sometimes call um, a bit of a gap registration. So an eight and a two foot on the Grand Org, accompanied by a little bit of the uh, choir division 
and the resi coupled together like that. And we'll go from there. So all things bright and beautiful to the tune of Royal Oak for William. There we go. All things bright and beautiful for William. Now we're going to go to the complete Anglican, which is all the way over here. And we're going to have um, him here called the Old Rugged Cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And, uh, and I loved that all and I loved that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. World of lost sinners was slain. This is a request from Tom, another one of our patrons. Um, so thank you very much, Tom, for your support. And William before that as well for your support. Uh, now Tom is requesting this um, in memory and in honour of his father who passed away in August. Um, this year, I assume, um, aged, get ready for this, 101 years old. So that's um, an incredible uh, life and uh, to live to that age, you know, you see so many things, you see so many changes um, in politics around the world, um, so many technologi uh, technological changes, advances, you know, airplanes, helicopters, um, all of these things. Of course, all of the, the horrendous things as well, 
uh, as well was um, um, you know natural disasters uh, really amazing to live that long and see so much so Tom this is absolutely for your father I'm very happy to play this and we'll all keep your father in mind who must have been born in uh, 1920 uh, presumably okay so here we go um, the old rugged cross
really nice to, to let the acoustic die down before pressing the general cancel button, which of course the original organ doesn't have. Not that I'm aware of anyway. Tom, well, I was absolutely thinking about um, your father being 101 during that and everything that he's seen and done in that amazing uh, lifetime. So that was just for you. The final hymn tonight is coming up. It is a request from Cheryl. Cheryl is, um, is well known in the organ world, it appears. <laughs> um, I've spoken to numerous people who who've mentioned your name, Cheryl. Um, and Cheryl has asked for this hymn, which is what we've printed off. It's 10,000 times, 10,000 in sparkling raiment bright. The armies of the ransomed saints throng up the steeps of light. Uh, after this hymn, we will have the organ voluntary. In fact, we'll probably go um, straight into the organ voluntary. Shall we do that to keep it exciting? Um, I'll fire it up now. Let me just... Um, there we go. Wonderful piece by De Rufle. Um, um, a, a, a few uh, on the theme, uh, solo theme du carillon des heures de la cathédrale de Soissons. Um, excuse my French pronunciation. But it is a wonderful, wonderful piece. Um, having just played this, practiced it, set it up just earlier on today. The last, that, the last time I played this was in 2003. 13, I think, so it's been a while. Um, but setting up that piece, um, the generals, just really reminds me, oh, I'll tell you what, it just it gave me um, goosebumps towards the end because this piece is so thrilling to play, I promise. No matter what it sounds like over your stereo speakers, in this room with all the speakers around, it sounds utterly glorious. And I can't wait to play it on the new organ with the proper keys, the proper pedal board, with all the stops properly laid out, it's going to be really, really exciting. Anyway, before we get to the Drufle, the Maurice Drufle, let's have this um, hymn here by um, Henry Olford. Uh, tune, uh, the words are by Henry Olford and the tune is by John Dykes. And it's for Cheryl, who's another one of our patrons, a very supportive patron indeed. So thank you very much, Cheryl, for ever, all, you've, um, all you've done. I will come back to you in a moment. Don't go anywhere. Let's go to the, um, should we have a bit of the top camera for a verse or two?
And I have just realised that I haven't told you the update on the new organ. I keep forgetting. You'll have to wait until after the fugue by Maurice de Rufle uh, before I tell you about the, one, the exciting new update on the new organ. I promise I will tell you after this. Don't go anywhere.
Thank you very much for the bit of paper which flew onto the pedal board and the iPad for twice telling me that the battery is low. The hazards of using um, these things and the hazards of being live as it were. I tried to do these recorded virtual shows live in one take to give it that live feel. Well, that was the uh, uh, wonderful uh, fugue there by Maurice Durufle. Um, it's terrific, actually. It really is very, very exciting. It's a very somber and serious, isn't it? Durufle was very good at writing uh, very serious music. And of course, it sounds just terrific on this organ, doesn't it? Really, really terrific. So the update on the organ, I will give you the update on the new organ now. <laughs> so I told you guys uh, how much we raised. So once again, thank you. Uh, I know a lot of you guys would have supported me uh, in the organ marathon. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to the patrons, uh, the ongoing patrons who support me on a monthly um, or an annual basis. That really, really makes a huge difference indeed. But the update on the organ um, is that uh, I went to see um, the organ builder uh, earlier in the week uh, to discuss a prototype uh, for the stop head. The, the stop heads are all going to be um, interchangeable. Of course, we need to be able to go between the handwork organs uh, and, and it's not good enough for me just to have uh, physical stops and have a very generic uh, stop name like diapason or flute. And it's not good enough to me. Uh, so we're actually going to have stop which, stops which change uh, when we go from Nancy to Rotterdam to Caen to Gurlitz to Harlem uh, and then, of course, any other future organs. I want, the, I want all of the stops on the organ to not necessarily have the identical stop name, but have a more um, relevant stop name. So the, the, head, the head scratching scenario is, the head, the head scratching, uh, you know, conundrum is obstacle is how do we get around the the, the uh, changing of the stops so frequently and uh, so they've come up with, with a new idea where we're using a, um, a, um, a Watkins and Shaw um, a stop physical stop they're a long throw stop and so that's a standard one that you'd find on uh, most Harrison Harrison organs um, but we're actually going to have a stop head, which so the, the, the whole stop head, which detaches, right? So it, it will click in to the actual uh, solenoid stop. I think that's the right word. Um, and once it's in, it's in. Um, and then we will, we will then be able to pull it out with a bit of force uh, to then change it. So they're actually designing a bit of a, um, a wedge, which goes into the original stop. Um, once it's in, it's really in. I've asked them just to make a tweak um, because um, the stop actually just rotates a little bit um, and it, there's nothing stopping it from spinning all the way around. What, what I've asked them to do is when it's in, it actually clicks in uh, so it won't rotate um, and it's fixed. So the text is actually completely straight. How many organs have you played where the stops eventually just end up you know, going all wonky and the, and the stop name is at an angle. Don't want that. Um, so very exciting. It's the first time that I've seen part of the organ, uh, an, an actual part of the organ. It's the actual stop. So really, really exciting. And now, now we have the money raised for the new organ. It makes it all the more real. I'm going to draw a close to today's virtual church from Nancy Cathedral. Thank you very much to anyone who may have donated today. Um, you may have, I don't know, you may be out of pocket after giving me donations for the organ marathon. But if you have, thank you very much. Um, we will go towards a new computer. Uh, and actually, you know, this is now my full time job. So some of it needs to go to living as well. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the hymns. I hope you've enjoyed the organ music. Um, Thank you for joining me and I will wish you a very fond farewell until next week. Oh, by the way, next Friday, this coming Friday, if you like this organ, Piotr Sklobowski is releasing his next organ uh, on Friday and I am doing the premiere organ recital on it. So you've already heard me play this, the uh, fourth trio sonata by Bach on it, but I will be exploring some of the other stops in an organ recital uh, on Friday. On Saturday, I will be releasing an, an organ album uh, in 
uh, in honor, in, um, in memory of the 9-11 terrorist attack uh, in New York. 20 year anniversary on Saturday, can't believe it's 20 years. So I will be playing an organ album, organ music, um, appropriate for remembrance. So for example, I'm going to open with the Vigil Fox arrangement of Come Sweet Death. Um, and lots of other um, sort of music in that mood. So until Friday, um, I will say a cheerio. Good night, everyone. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye.